Hello everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 117, I will take a little tour of accidental complexity. This is an anti-pattern that exists not only in development, but also in architecture. It is true that we do have a lot of complexity in this industry, especially within architecture. Uh, for example, uh, five nines architecture, such as what's illustrated here, is very complex. However, one of the things we tend to do as software architects is to make things complex. And for example, um, here's an actual artifact of the major information flows of the back-end settlement systems of, of one of the world's largest banks. And one of the things that we unfortunately do as architects is make things overly complex. So we do this for many reasons. One is to always maybe stay in the loop so that you'll always be involved because no one else can figure out your design or documentation. Um, it's also really good for job security, by the way, as well. <laughs> this happens all the time in architecture, but it's not always architecture. Now let me show you another really good example of accidental complexity. So I want to show you uh, this code right here. Now let's take a look at this method called adjust number. And what I'd like all of you to do is to press pause and see how long it takes you to figure this out. It's kind of a good test and it really goes back to some of those core operator precedents kind of concepts within languages right here. And so um, press pause, um, try to figure out what this method does, and time yourself and see how long you took to come up with the answer. Now I'm going to assume you hit pause and do have the answer, and so hold on to that because I want you to compare something else. I'm going to show you some other code. Are you ready? Here's another method. Now what I'd like you to do at the same time is to hit pause and figure out what this method does. Oh, wait a minute, you don't need to do that because as I was talking, you figured out what this method does. Let's see, it doubles if even, right? Yes, how'd you know? Well, because that's what you named the method. <laughs> I mean, I could look and see if x mod two equals zero, that means it's even, multiple return times two, otherwise just return the number. This. So usually the prior one takes about one to five minutes to be able to find the answer for. This one, it takes one to five seconds. But you know what's really interesting, everybody? I showed you two different methods. You know what's fascinating? Both of these do the exact same thing. You see, even as developers, we introduce complexity into everything we do. We try to do this to show off our technical prowess, how good we are as developers. Well, let me tell you something, everyone. Um, if you were on one of my projects, um, I would have an immense amount of respect for the developer who wrote the bottom method and I would likely probably fire the developer who did the top method. You see, we do this to think that we're showing off of how good we are, but in fact, in my experience and opinion, those developers and architects who can provide code or a solution in a clear and concise manner, that's the kind of architect or developer that I respect. As a matter of fact, um, my friend Neil Ford um, has a lot of quotes. Um, this one happens to be one of my favorites from Neil. He says, developers are drawn to complexity like moths to a flame, frequently with the same results. You see, accidental complexity is as follows. Um, we do have something called essential complexity, and this exists in architecture design and development, that we have a hard problem to solve. Five nines, that's 99.999% availability. And that's about 86 milliseconds of downtime per day. That's a hard problem to solve. But all too often as architects and developers, 
uh, we imply accidental complexity. In other words, we make things overly complex, hence we introduce complexity. We've made a problem hard. And if you look at the two statements down below, we have a hard problem and we've made a problem hard. And that's what accidental complexity is really all about. It's introducing unnecessary complexity into a solution. Well, for architecture, uh, one of the things I like to do uh, to avoid accidental complexity is really focus on what I call the four C's of architecture. I call it the four C's because all four of these uh, words I'm going to show you all start with the letter C. The first is communication. The second is collaboration. And it's knowing the difference between these two. A communication is telling somebody about something. Collaboration is working with somebody to formulate the solution. Coupling those with clarity and also being concise. And tying all four of these C's together, not only in our verbal communication of a solution, but also our written solution, our documents, our diagrams, making sure that they're clear and concise, avoids this accidental complexity anti-pattern. We talk a lot about this pattern and others in our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture. Um, I thought this would just kind of be a fun pattern. This came up uh, uh, a couple weeks ago at work, and I thought, you know, I should do a lesson on that. <laughs> As a matter of fact, um, for more resources, you can go to my website, specifically Software Architecture Monday, where all of these lessons are. So I hope you enjoyed this short lesson about accidental complexity and that it does exist, and just to create an awareness for it and try to practice those four C's to make sure that things are clear, things are concise, that we communicate but also collaborate at the same time. And so this has been Lesson 117, Accidental Complexity. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, stay tuned in two weeks for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday. Thank you.